Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to take a look at our phasor diagram in context of what we call an RCL circuit. An RCL circuit is a circuit that has a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor along with a oscillating voltage source. Let's say our voltage source puts out 100 volts RMS at 60 hertz. So what will this circuit look like? Well, without knowing the exact values of the capacitor and the inductor, we, give, we have given you what we call the reactants of the capacitor and inductor. The reactants is kind of the opposition to current, just like a resistor opposes current flow, so does a capacitor, and so does an inductor when the current is changing. When there's an oscillating current, then you'll have some opposition to current from the capacitor and the inductor, and so instead of calling that resistance, we call that reactance. Instead of using an R for resistance, we use an X for reactance, and the sub C means for capacitor, sub L means for the inductor. And let's say that the value for the inductive reactance is 300 ohms, for the resistance is 200 ohms, and for the capacitor it's 100 ohms. So how do we find, how do we draw a phasor diagram from that? Well it turns out what we do is we, we draw the uh, value of the resistance and the reactance of the resistors and the capacitor and the inductor in terms of a phasor diagram like projection. We, we, uh, we, do, we use vectors in order to draw that. And since the reactants of the inductor oppose the current first, because the inductor opposes a change in the current, that comes first in the phase, then comes the resistance opposition to the, to the uh, current, and then at the end, it's the capacitor that opposes the current, but later in, in uh, time. So when we draw that, since the inductor opposes the current first, we draw that up here, and we draw the length of this vector corresponding to the value of this this reactance is 300 ohms, so corresponding we make this 300 in length. For the capacitor it's only 100, which we draw in this direction, and then we draw the resistance like this, and so that would be 200 ohms, 100 ohms, and 300 ohms. So here we can say that X sub L is equal to 300 ohms, we can say that X sub C is equal to 100 ohms, and resistance is equal to 200 ohms. And you can see that the reactance of the inductor acts 90 degrees or a quarter of a phase before the resistance opposes the current and the capacitor is 90 degrees behind the, the opposition of the resistor. Now we're going to find the total resistance of the circuit. Well, we call that impedance. The total resistance of the circuit is called the impedance and all we have to do is add up these vectorially. So first we're going to add the reactances together. So since this is bigger than this, we're going to subtract 100 from the 300 and we end up with a net result of 200 ohms of reactance. So X is simply equal to X sub L minus X sub C. In this case, that's equal to 300 ohms minus 100 ohms. So that's equal to 200 ohms. So the reactance of this circuit is 200 ohms, which means the total opposition of the capacitor and the inductor combined. Okay, now we add that to the resistance of the resistor. Notice there's a 90 degree phase difference. So again, we, act, we add them as vectors. So when we add these two together, we have to add them vectorially. So that will give us what we call the impedance. So Z, called the impedance, is equal to the square root of the reactance squared plus the resistance squared. So simply using Pythagorean theorem to find that result. So this is equal to the square root of 200 squared plus 200 squared. And so that would be equal to 200 squared times two. Take the square root. And so that would be 283 rounded off. So it would be 283 ohms, which is called the impedance. So let's put that down, that's called the impedance of the circuit, which means the total opposition to the circuit. Now how do we get that into a phase diagram showing the current and the voltages across? So how do we line this up with what we call a phasor diagram that shows the voltage and the current? Well it turns out that the impedance is the same phase as the voltage of the voltage supply. So whatever the, volt, the phase is for the voltage supply, that will be the same as the phase of the impedance. So there's going to be a phase difference here. Uh, <clears throat> let's draw the phase angle right here. There's the phase angle. We'll show in just a moment how to get that. But just to show you that the impedance is, in the same, is at the same phase as the voltage of, this, of the voltage supply. So let's call this Vmax right there, which is the same as the, uh, or I should, <clears throat> 
Maybe I should call it VRMS, doesn't matter. Well, we'll call it VMAX. Probably better to show it like that, okay? And then the current is in phase with the opposition of the resistor to the circuit. So the current is always in phase with the resistor. So let's draw that here. So here's the current, I max. So we'll just draw this I max like that. And again, remember that, of course, the phase diagram is going to rotate around like this. Now the voltage across the, the inductor is going to be in phase with the exabel, with the reactants. So let's call this, this would be the voltage across the inductor, we'll call that V sub L, and then the voltage across the capacitor right here, so V sub C. So now you can see the relative order, of course, don't forget the voltage across the resistor, which will be down here, so V across the resistor. Let's make it a big V, V across the resistor. So now you know the phase uh, representation of the voltages relative to one another in the circuit. Now what you can see here is that the maximum voltage of, of the inductor is reached first, then the voltage across the whole circuit, then the voltage across the resistor, and finally the voltage across the capacitor lags. Notice there's a 180 degree phase difference between when the maximum voltage is reached, is reached across the inductor and the maximum voltage is reached across the capacitor, and right in between those two, that's when the maximum voltage is reached across the resistor. And the maximum voltage across the whole circuit, which of course is in line with the voltage supply, will happen at this point right here, which is in phase with the impedance the way it's drawn. Now, how do you find that phase angle? Well, it turns out we can find the phase angle. Let me draw that here. So phi is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side to the angle. And so the opposite side to the angle, that would be the reactance x divided by the adjacent side, which would be the resistance r. So it's simply the arc tangent of x over r. In this case, just as an example, would be the arc tangent of uh, x would be 200 ohms divided by r, which is 200 ohms. Of course, that's the arc tangent of 1, which means that it's at the 45 degree angle. So in this particular example, our phase angle is 45 degrees. Remember the references from the phase of the current to the phase of the voltage. So in this case, it's a positive phase angle representing the difference between when the current reaches the maximum of the circuit and when the voltage reaches the maximum across the circuit. Now, let's go ahead and draw that on our diagram right there. So you can see that the voltage across the inductor is first, and since the inductor reactance is a large quantity, 300 ohms, the, the, the maximum voltage across the inductor will be larger than across any other device. So let's see, what color should I use for the inductor? I'm going to use different colors. So let's say that for the inductor, X sub L, I'm going to use green. And so this is going to represent my voltage across the inductor over time. So that would be a good representation. And this pen is dying on me, so let's put that away. Uh, next, we let's see here, we have the voltage across the circuit is next. And you can see that the difference would be 45 degrees, so it would be a 45 degree shift. Notice that this happens first and the voltage across the entire circuit is behind. So let me use, let's see, oh, I'll use blue for that. So notice being 45 degrees behind that at this point it will reach the maximum value. So that maybe it looks kind of like that because it's a smaller magnitude. So let me come out a little bit further out and then like this and like this. So this would then represent the voltage across the whole circuit. Notice, strangely enough, the voltage across the inductor can be larger in magnitude than the voltage across the whole circuit because they're going to be happening in different phases and one voltage will be subtracted from the other and they all add up to the total voltage of the circuit. Notice there'll be a 45 degree angle between those two representing this difference right here. So this here, going from there to there, would be what we call a 45 degree phase angle. Between the voltage of the, and uh, let's, let's see here, the voltage of the circuit, let's go over here, uh, that would be the blue. Now we want to draw the voltage across the resistance. Notice the 90 degree difference between the voltage across the inductor and the voltage across the resistor. And let's see here, what should we use? Let's use red for that. So for the resistor, we're going to use the red color, well, kind of pink color, and it's going to be 90 degree difference. So we don't reach a maximum until we reach this value right there. So let's do that over here. So maybe something like this, this, and like and like this. All right, so you can see again, there's now a 90 degree difference, a 90 degree phase shift between 
when the inductor reaches a maximum voltage and when the resistor reaches a maximum voltage. Okay, and then finally we're going to do the capacitor and let me use purple for the capacitor. So voltage across the capacitor is going to be in purple. Um, maybe I should have put a green around the voltage of the inductor. There we go, because we're dealing with inductors there. So for the capacitor, again, there'll be a 90 degree difference between the capacitor and the resistor and a 180 degree difference between the inductor and the capacitor. So when the inductor has a maximum voltage across it, the capacitor will therefore have a minimum voltage across it. And notice since the reactance of the capacitor is only 100 ohms and the reactance of the inductor is 300 ohms, there will be a much smaller voltage across the capacitor. So it'll probably look something like this. So when that's at a maximum, here it's at a minimum. So let's see here. So probably like that. And so then you can see that there's a 180 degree difference, 180 degree difference between the voltage across the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor. Like that. And hopefully that uh, clears it up a little bit more for you. Again, remember that this is just a snapshot in time for what's happening over there. So if we're looking at this case right here, remember the projection onto the x-axis is where we want to find the voltage at that particular moment in time. So notice the projection on the x-axis, the voltage across the resistor will be a maximum. Since that's done in red, that would be this point right there. Notice at that point, that's when the voltage across the inductor is zero and the voltage across the capacitor is zero, that's that point right there. And notice that the voltage across the whole circuit is declining, that's the projection right here. And as you can see, as time goes by and the phase the phase diagram shifts over like this. You can see that the voltage across the whole circuit will eventually go to zero as this goes vertically up. And then the projection onto the x-axis, of course, will be zero. So the point, the snapshot of this right here on that diagram would be this point right here. Right over there. That's where the voltage across the inductor and capacitor is zero. The voltage across the resistor is maximum. And the voltage across the whole circuit, the blue line right here, is declining as the phase of the diagram is shifting over like this. So what we can see is that that can be represented by a phase, phase diagram as it turns over like this. It just shows different moments in time. And that's the diagram that shows everything as a function of time. Here it's a particular snapshot. And you can see that as the phase diagram turns over, the projection of these vectors onto the x-axis will give you that momentary value of V sub L, V sub C, V sub R, and and the V across the whole circuit and that's what phase diagrams do for us and in this case it's the phase diagram of the RCL circuit. Hopefully that helps clear it up for you. That's how we do that.